First of all, though, it's very clear from this passage that it's not just about winning souls. We're, we're supposed to be teaching and, and, you know, getting people baptized and things like that. There's the, the whole gamut, the whole run of uh, spiritual life, a spiritual reproduction is what you're doing. When you're winning a soul to Christ, you want that, that person, once they're saved, they're born again, right? They're, they're a babe in Christ. They're a brand new believer. When, when someone decides for the very first time to put all of their faith, put all of their confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ, there's a new birth there. And from that new birth, there's a lot of growth that they need to do, just like any birth. It's just like a physical birth. When a child's born into this world, they need to grow, right? We want, and and as, a, as a, a parent, especially, you want that child to grow up and to be nurtured and, and to be guided into the right ways and to be taught and to be instructed. Well, I believe that we ought to deal with spiritual children in a similar fashion. Now, there's a big difference between the physical child and the spiritual child, right? The physical child, they need somebody to, to uh, care for them, and if they don't have someone to care for them, they're going to die, right? The physical life, it's only good. There's, there's a physical death that comes after that. The good thing about a spiritual life is that once someone's spiritually alive, they're never going to die. That's eternal life. That's everlasting life. So anybody who puts their faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, if they don't get the nurture, if they don't get the nourishment, if they don't get somebody helping them and looking out for them, you know what? They're still alive. They're not going to die. So we put the importance on and the focus on winning people to Christ more than we do the follow up and follow through and trying to make sure everyone's getting the nourishment that they want and they need. Because... At the end of the day, let's face it, some people, they don't want to have somebody guiding them. They don't want to have the instruction. They just don't. They feel like maybe they don't need it or whatever the case may be. And because they've already had their physical birth and they may be an adult, they may be a grown person, hey, they can make their choice for themselves on how their spiritual life is going to continue. So bearing that in mind, that's why you can't just take one example and just apply it blankly without without providing a little bit more insight in, which is pretty common sense but it needs to be mentioned you can't just just make a phrase and just run with it i've heard people say oh man yo you're just you're just creating all these spiritual babies and just leaving them to die on the doorstep well no we're not leaving them to die because they have eternal life they're not going to die ever again and i've i've actually heard people criticize um, soul winning efforts where you go we used to do at, when I was going to Faith Forward Baptist Church in Arizona we would do these small town soul winning events and we'd go to remote places in Arizona and just preach the gospel places that nobody's out there knocking doors nobody's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ so we would go out there as a church and say hey we're going to take a day or two days or three days however long it takes to get through this town and we're going to knock every door and we're going to try to preach the gospel to everybody in that town that sounds like a good thing doesn't it yeah. amen right try to lead someone who's lost to the Lord amen. great thing but you know what the naysayers say Oh, but what, what are you doing? With, are you going back? Are you following up with them? Are you, you know, are you, what about church? Are you just leaving them th there on the doorstep? Well, look, it's way better. It's way better that a person gets saved from going to hell and spending an eternity burning and being tortured and tormented and actually going to heaven when they die. That's way better than having to make sure, oh, they're getting in church and they're growing and everything else. You can get somebody in church and you can spend all kinds of time with them and you can get them to clean up their life, but if they're not saved, they're still going to hell. Amen. The important thing, the most important thing is that they put their trust in Jesus Christ. And that's what we focus on by far and away the most. And that's what I teach and that's what I believe. And I think that we should put the, the vast majority of our resources and our time into reaching more people with the gospel of Christ. But that being said, there is a place for following up with the people and trying to get them discipled and trying to get them in church and trying to help them to improve. But the biggest obstacle that we face with that is when people simply don't want it. 